Let's review the tablet specs. It has a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, a 2.5K IPS screen, 120 hertz refresh rate, native touchscreen, and 4096 levels of pressure sensor. Quick unboxing. First, focusing on the controller section, the controllers boast a detachable design, featuring a 2-in-1 base in the center that integrates both a stand and a battery. You can effortlessly remove the controller by simply pressing the latch located on its back. To reattach it, just align it with a guide rail and slide it downwards. Moving on to the keyboard, it features a magnetic interface. The trackpad is rather compact, roughly the same size as the controller's base. The fiberglass material has a very pleasant feel to it. The kickstands on both sides can be pressed down, and the key travel is a bit shorter than that of a standard laptop keyboard, resulting in a softer touch. The keyboard's underside features a leather-like texture, and a white backlight automatically illuminates once it's connected to a phone. Finally, we have the tablet's main unit itself. So, what score would you give? What are your thoughts on the tablet's exterior design? The back panel is crafted from CNC aluminum alloy, and its rear kickstand offers 173 degrees of stepless adjustment. The hinge provides substantial resistance. The keyboard's magnetic hold is not exceptionally strong, just about average. Inside the packaging, at the very bottom, you'll find a 100-watt PD fast charger and a data cable, which is a C2C cable, measuring approximately 1 meter in length. At the bottom of the tablet, you'll find the power button with fingerprint recognition, a mini SSD interface, a 3.5mm infrared headphone jack, volume keys, an air vent, and a turbo button. On the tablet's left side are two USB 4 ports, with speakers on the bottom edges. The right side features a USB, a port, and a TF card slot. The tablet's bottom has magnetic contacts, and the controllers can be easily attached by aligning them with the rails on both sides. You can also connect the controllers to the tablet through Bluetooth mode and control it with a single controller. The joysticks are Hall Effect joysticks with almost no damping. The controller's buttons, the snake-shaped buttons are all micro-motion buttons with low actuation force and fast response and normal key travel. The dual S keys are located on the sides of the controller. The turbo button can call up the built-in front end, which allows for power adjustments. Power consumption, fan speed, controller vibration, and screen brightness. Shoulder buttons are micro switches with short travel and quick actuation. Triggers are Hall Effect linear with normal travel. Beyond fingerprint unlock, the tablet has a top-mounted AI camera for facial recognition. The tablet is 1.34 centimeters thick. The Switch 2 is 1.40 centimeters, and the Legion Go is 2.0 centimeters. Screen size compared to the Legion Go and Switch 2. Side-by-side -side thickness comparison of the three tablets with controllers attached, here's how it compares to popular 8-inch handhelds. The XEL tablet alone weighs 821 grams, a single controller is 179 grams, and the tablet with controllers is 930 grams. Tablet plus keyboard, 1.09 kilograms. Switch 2, 519 grams. Legion Go, 851 grams. MSI Claw, 737 grams. At 23 degrees Celsius room temp, after 20 minutes CPU stress test, fan noise is 38 to 39 decibels. TDP is stable at 30 watts, core temp 73 degrees Celsius, P core frequency is 3.0 gigahertz, E core 3.5 gigahertz. The screen. The screen's top corner temperature ranges from 47 to 40 to 36 degrees from left to right. The metal back casing stays cool, with the right side reaching 30 to 42 degrees, tested with an X-Rite color calibrator. With 513 nits of brightness, it covers 99.8% sRGB with 145% sRGB color gamut volume. The drive base supports a 2230 SSD. Tests show peak read speeds of 6900 megabytes per second and peak write speeds of 5800 megabytes per second. Besides the standard SSD slot, the X1 Air tablet introduces a new mini SSD interface resembling a SIM card slot. A SIM ejector tool is needed. This mini SSD is tiny, only slightly larger than a TF card, and 1.4mm thick. It has peak write speeds of 3500 megabytes per second at 88 degrees Celsius, and peak write speeds of 3300 megabytes per second at 86 degrees Celsius, nearly hitting its theoretical limit. The new microSD Express card on the Nintendo Switch has a max theoretical read at write speed of 900 megabytes per second, which is one third of this mini SSD speed. It has a BE201 network card with Wi-Fi 7 support. The battery is 
72 watt hours and it charges at 50 watts, taking just over an hour. After a full discharge, I tested three power settings from 99% to 0%. At 4 watts, Hades 2 ran for 8 hours and 45 minutes, drawing 6 to 8 watts. At 15 watts, playing a AAA game, it lasted around 3 hours. The total power draw fluctuates between 1 to 20 watts. Running an ADA game at 20 watts gives 2 hours of battery. Above 50% charge, it draws 33 to 40 watts. It gets two 8-hour gaming sessions. Now for the gaining tests. At 4 watts, the XL performs slightly better than the Steam Deck. At 5 watts, its performance is much like the Steam Deck's, drawing about 9 watts total. At 6 watts TDP, it runs games smoothly at 1200p. The TDP isn't maxed, and power consumption is near saturation. This means a physical connection uses 0.2 to 0.3 watts more than Bluetooth. Next up, the control. Next, let's compare the power consumption to the weekly performance of mainstream mobile devices. The 28 volt model exhibits a significant advantage as long as the total device power stays below 24 watts. However, once the total power surpasses 28 watts, their performance tends to become quite similar. Then I'll control the TDP to test the thermal performance at 12, 17, and 25 watts. Lastly, 30 watt plug-in performance, 